Hi, welcome back. This is Future Doctor TV show. I'm Dr. James Biddle. Uh, we are going through a series of medical topics important to you and your family's health and giving you vital, important, simple, inexpensive, natural, effective things that you can do to improve your health right away and hopefully keep your family healthy. Tonight we're talking about fibromyalgia, a very complex entity. My disclaimer for this is that this is not medical advice. This is simply educational material. And if you have a certain medical condition that needs treated, you should be treated by a licensed, qualified health practitioner. So tonight we're talking specifically about fibromyalgia. Uh, fibromyalgia is, is a, a, very, uh, a very acute interest to me for several reasons. One is because we get a lot of fibromyalgia patients because they're one of those challenging cases. Fibromyalgia wasn't even recognized as a diagnosis until about... Uh, 10, to, 10 to 15 years ago, and it hasn't really been accepted as a diagnosis by most doctors uh, until very recently, and many doctors still don't accept it as a diagnosis. Uh, insurance companies didn't start reimbursing for the diagnosis of uh, fibromyalgia until recently. Fibromyalgia is, is very complex. Most doctors don't know how to treat it. Uh, for, for the most part, uh, they fall into a role of uh, blaming the patient. They, they find different things that the patient has done and say, well, the patient's depressed. The, they mislabel the patient as something else. Uh, and, and there's a reason for this. It's because doctors want to help people. And it's very challenging to help fibromyalgia with the conventional medical tools. And then the doctors feel f frustrated. They're, they're not having success, so they, they, they don't feel competent. And because of that, they then transfer that frustration uh, onto the patient. They think, well, the patient then must be non-compliant or passive-aggressive, and they're thwarting me. The patient's not letting me succeed in being a good doctor. Uh, when, in fact, the doctor just hasn't really found the right piece to the puzzle yet or the right combination of pieces to help the patient. And it's really just more about uh, learning, uh, more about how to help people. The definition of fibromyalgia... It's a chronic condition marked by a spontaneous, widespread, soft tissue tenderness and pain. Also, sleep disturbance and fatigue. And so there's these tender points spread throughout the body. It occurs in about 3.5% of all women, usually around the ages of 30, 40, or 50, and only about one half of 1% of men. In some ways, uh, fibromyalgia, I think of it uh, kind of like... Uh, adult autism, those people who survive childhood without autism uh, in adulthood uh, get things like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, and multiple chemical sensitivity. Uh, but the one big difference is that while autism has a, a, a threefold predominance of men or boys, the fibromyalgia has a sevenfold dominance of uh, women. So there's, there's something very different there, and it probably has to do with hormones. So the pains are uh, widespread. They occur in all four quadrants of the body, not just in one. That would just be a local injury. Uh, and you have to have at least 11 of 18 specified trigger points, and they have to hurt with a pressure of 9 pounds. And they actually have little machines that you can apply pressure of 9 pounds to diagnose fibromyalgia. One more time, the, the main symptoms of fibromyalgia are fatigue, increased pain, especially uh, in the morning and with weather changes, uh, with anxiety and with stress. And your pain is relieved, actually, when you do mild physical activity uh, or when you alleviate stress. It can be worse if you do extreme activity. That makes it very different than uh, the autoimmune diseases and rheumatological diseases uh, in that those are usually worse with, act with activity. The other big difference is that there's no measurable inflammation in the bloodstream or the body with fibromyalgia, whereas there is with the autoimmune diseases or inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. So the main markers of inflammation we would use uh, would be a SED rate and a CRP or C-reactive protein. And those are completely normal in fibromyalgia where they're almost always elevated in these inflammatory conditions. So that's the main thing that separates that from the uh, autoimmune diseases. Other symptoms of fibromyalgia include mood changes, irritability, uh, depression, anxiety, migraine headaches, sensitivity to noises, lights, and uh, smells, uh, numbness and or tingling in certain parts of the body, abdominal pain, especially from irritable bowel syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, and also having an irritable bladder, especially for the women, often have uh, 
interstitial cystitis or irritable bladder. Um, other uh, chronic uh, co conditions, again, migraines and chronic fatigue syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, depression, restless leg syndrome, uh, TMJ or pain of your jaw, the temporal mandibular joint, uh, myofascial pain syndrome, which is really almost another name for fibromyalgia, but it's specific uh, for tenderness where your muscles attach to your bones, also known as an enthesopathy. The actual diagnostic criteria for fibromyalgia is widespread pain, all four quadrants, that persists longer than three months, the 11 of 18 uh, trigger points. So what does conventional medicine do for fibromyalgia? Well, they basically try you on a series of different medications. They usually uh, start with uh, some medications that relieve types of pain. Uh, these are usually antidepressants or anti-seizure medications. Uh, so the classic is Elevil or amitriptyline, taking that at bedtime, starting at 10 milligrams and working up to maybe 50 or 100 milligrams. If you're using it as an antidepressant, you would take 100 milligrams a couple times a day. But even 10 or 20 milligrams often helps us sleep quite a bit. And this is a good strategy. I, I will do this for patients also. Uh, the problem is it just treats the symptoms and doesn't change the underlying disease. You still have the fibromyalgia if you stop taking the medication. And often uh, the medication will work for a while and then stop working. Uh, recently, there's uh, one FDA-approved drug for fibromyalgia. It's called Lyrica or uh, prega, Pregabalin. And it's an anti-seizure medication, but it's also used for neuropathic pain or the type of pain that diabetics get in their feet uh, from neuropathy. Uh, but it also tends to work very good for fibromyalgia, and people are getting good results. My patients really like this uh, medication. Uh, and then a variety of antidepressants. And one of the challenges with antidepressants is that patients go into their doctor complaining of uh, fatigue and pain and sleep disturbance, and the doctors only have how long? Five to seven minutes to spend with the patient. So how does the doctor end the visit? They have to write a prescription. That's, that's, writing a prescription for a doctor is their license to end the interview and leave so they can, they can get on to the next patient. You have to do something as a doctor. You have to help people. And if you're going to help people by sitting and talking with them, it's going to take a lot of time to help them. You're going to have to schedule at least 15, 25, maybe even 40 minutes uh, to help them. In our clinic, we spend an hour and a half to two hours on the first visit and uh, 40 minutes on the second visit. This is how we actually play Sherlock Holmes and find out their story and how they got sick. But I've had dozens, scores, perhaps hundreds of patients tell me, look, I, I don't have fibromyalgia because I'm depressed. I'm depressed because I have fibromyalgia. So yes, the antidepressant helps numb me out a little bit so I can get through my day without feeling quite so bad, but it's not doing anything really for the fibromyalgia or helping my life. All it's doing is making me miss my life by making me a zombie. And besides that, it's taking away my ability to have an orgasm and decrease my libido, so that's my marriage is falling apart. You know, I need some help. I don't need another antidepressant. You know, people will ask me, do you, do you treat fibromyalgia? And I'll say, no, absolutely not. I treat people. And some of them have fibromyalgia. But we're going to treat the person. And we're going to treat each person a little bit differently. So I'm going to present you with protocols, but nobody's going to get the very same thing when they come in.